In our previous video, we talked about the prisoner's dilemma and how it's just one example of a game that people play when choosing between cooperation and safety. Cooperate with your partner in crime or betray them and get a lighter sentence. What we want to highlight in this video is that the prisoner's dilemma is set up ex ante to have no cooperation between the players. It shows us a game where two players would benefit from both cooperating and may not choose to do so, due to the risk of each betraying the other and leaving their partner in the lurch with a punishment. The payoffs are such that both players want to defect, despite it being more beneficial for each to cooperate. Here is a payoff matrix from such a game. Whilst it can be useful for describing certain behaviour in the real world, it certainly doesn't capture the key features of many interactions in society. We are not often diametrically opposed to each other, and it's usually more subtle than this. Another example of a game is the stag hunt, which also has two players who would do better to cooperate with each other, and in a departure from Prisoner's Dilemma, they may both choose to do so. We argue that it's a more realistic setup for many situations. Each of the two players, without consulting with the other, has to decide whether they are going to play stag or hare. A player chooses to either hunt a hare, which is a low-risk strategy and less rewarding, but something that they can do alone, or they can choose to hunt a stag, which is higher risk and higher reward, and also requires cooperation with the other player. Here's the payoff matrix for such a game. If the two players both decide to cooperate, they both get the payoff of the larger meal, which in this case is four. If both players decide to hunt the smaller hare, then they both get the lower payoff of two. If one plays stag but the other plays hare, the one who has risked stag gets a lower payoff of one, and the person who chose not to, to play hare, gets a slightly higher payoff of three. So what's the result of this game? As usual, we fix an equilibrium and check which action has a higher payoff for each player. For example, holding fix that player 2 plays stag, we compare the payoff for player 1 between the two actions and continue until we have gone through the four possible scenarios. There are two pure strategy Nash equilibria, where both players play stag or both players play hare. There's also a mixed strategy where a player randomises between the two actions in such a way as to make the other player indifferent between their two actions. So now that we've seen the stag hunt, does it actually occur in the world? Brian Skirms' example of this game is boat rowing and illustrates the point nicely. If two people are sitting side by side on a boat and each one has an oar, if one of them rows and the other doesn't, neither of them benefits. This is like one of them playing stag and the other one playing hare. No one gets anywhere. However, if both play stag and so both choose to oar, they will get to their destination. Finally, if they both refuse to oar, then they will just stay stationary. Another example of this game is predators such as wolves and orcas who cooperate to hunt large prey instead of individually hunting smaller, less rewarding prey. Again, if one of the members decides to pursue a large prey and expends a lot of energy on this whilst another animal in the group decides just to go after a smaller, safer catch, the former animal is not very well off and may go hungry. So there are many such situations that initially are thought to be prisoner's dilemma that might be better understood using the stag hunt framework. Finally, we look again at a payoff matrix for a prisoner's dilemma game and make some minor changes to show the payoff of defecting when your opponent cooperates. This turns out to transform our game into none other than a stag hunt, showing how closely these two games are to each other and why they might get confused. This prisoner's dilemma matrix has a payoff of 2-2 two, two for cooperate cooperate, 1-1 one, one for defect defect, and 0-3 and 3-0 respectively for cooperate defect. As discussed, the Nash equilibrium here is defect defect. We now minus two units of payoff from those who defect against cooperators to increase the penalty from doing so. Solving as before, we see that the game is turned into a stag hunt with two equilibria. Cooperate, cooperate, and defect, defect. Or stag, stag, and hare, hare. 
So in summary, the Christmas Dilemma is a very popular and useful teaching tool. However, the stag hunt is also an interesting game that may be applicable to lots of scenarios and illustrates that we are not always in situations where we cannot cooperate with each other.